we'll talk more about that. So this is just a brief survey of um, some of the concepts. So let's look at the now. Just uh, to point out how the New York looked like at Edison times, <laughs> because there were literally there were 2,000 generating stations in New York. Every square mile had one generating station. What was the problem? Because you could generate uh, power at the 100 volts or so DC, and when you have to distribute it, you have to use a lot of copper, and therefore, because of the losses in uh, wires and the economy of the scale, and you couldn't really uh, distribute it widely. So you had to build every square mile one power generating station. And this is what it shows all the wires all over the place. Of course, OK, here we are, we are getting to what existed before Tesla's time. This is a DC motor with a commutator with a slip rings. And you see that on this shaft a lot of uh, uh, segments of the commutator. And that is the main thing that Tesla objected. In fact, uh, he realized that very early that basically all the DC motors and generators are essentially AC machines. What you are doing is, bec uh, in a generating, when you're generating the power with DC generator, you're actually generating an AC power, and you are really converting it by uh, these uh, rather complicated and uh, very, very inventive, in fact, devices, mechanical devices. You're converting and rectifying this AC into the DC to present it to the external world. And likewise, when you're using it in the motor, you're applying the DC power or DC current, and you're essentially, with the commutator, reverting that back, generating internally an AC such that you can get continuous motion. Because what's happening is that if you have a, in fact, let's go back now to some of the view graphs that I have and show that. Uh, if you have a, The, um, you have to, if you have, a, for example, a permanent magnet on a stator, and then you have uh, the windings on a rotor, on armature winding, you first have to bring the DC current to the armature, and then you have to use the segments to invert them, because each time this coil goes through the one half of the revolution, it has to re change the direction of the current, and it's such that you can continue the motion in the same direction. Otherwise, it will be sort of a motion which will go back and forth and will never uh, make a continuous motion. So what uh, Tesla came up with is he came up with the following idea that if you have, and you have to think about it at the time when uh, DC was predominant and it was thought that AC is not uh, feasible, that someone was proposing to use not only single AC, but two AC waveforms. In other words, at the moment, it may look like you are complicating the situation by putting on uh, this kind of a structure two windings. This is a one part of one winding, and this is part of another winding. And uh, what you could think of is this. You could have permanent magnet on the center, and then you can rotate this permanent magnet and depending on, uh, you, you're creating the flux, and this flux crosses the field here. And depending on the uh, angle, you're creating, because if you're rotating at the constant speed, because the voltage induced in the winding is a uh, product of this uh, direction and the cosine of the angle of this magnetic field, flux density, therefore you're ending up with, a, by rotating at a constant speed, you're ending up with the generating of voltage waveforms, which are uh, basically um, sinusoidal with some peak value. And since you have two waveform, two windings which are set 90 degrees apart, you are creating the two voltage waveforms which are shifted 90 degrees in time. So when this one voltage waveform reaches the peak in this winding, it is at zero in this winding. And likewise, when this one is at zero, this one is at the peak in the negative direction. So basically, you have a really rudiments of your two-phase generator that uh, that he invented then a system where you can create uh, two-phase currents shifted 90 degrees in time by providing the two sets of winding which are 90 degrees phase uh, <laughs> displaced in a, in a space. Then, of course, uh, all the machines are reversible. And uh, 
you can think of uh, see. You can make a synchronous motor out of that if you are now putting electrical power here and then uh, driving the two windings with the two phase waveforms like here which are 90 degrees set in space you are creating what's known as a rotating magnetic field which pulls behind itself this permanent magnet rotor and therefore this is the basis of his synchronous motor that you are really synchronous motor moves at the speed which is exactly the proportional to the frequency of the currents. For example, if you have 60 hertz currents which were adopted early on, that means uh, 3600 revolutions per minute. That means the speed of the rotor will move at 3600 revolutions per minute. Of course, by putting the larger number of uh, different sets of windings, you can make a four pole machine and then operate at 1800 RPM, etc. So basically you can have a single machine which is either the generator, two phase generator, where you are putting the mechanical power input, rotating it, and creating the two-phase power out. So this is a basis. In fact, the synchronous generators, as this is here, is the way that all the power, most of the power is, is being generated from the hydroelectric power plants, from the nuclear power plants, or whatever other means. Because that's the uh, one uh, advantage of that, of course, is immediately obvious. Because by utilizing the two-phase system, he's able to create this rotating magnetic field and able to create a motor which has no other moving parts. There is no commutator, brushes, and all the mechanical problems associated with it and the need to maintain for maintenance, etc. However, there is one addition, additional thing that he has done, and that is if you have this permanent magnet here, of course you can have a permanent magnet synchronous motor, but uh, let's do it this way. But to get the higher powers, you really need the higher fields in uh, air gap of the machine. So what's typically done is you use uh, some uh, ferromagnetic materials or some uh, laminations for a rotor, and then you put the wire on it and conduct a DC current through it. So you make an electromagnet out of this rotor. But of course, what you need then to do is you need to bring the power or DC current to this electromagnet. In other words, you need a something like this. OK? That's, well, that's good enough this way, I think. Yeah. So you need to source of a DC current. How are you going to bring, because this is rotating here, how are you going to bring the DC current into the windings on a, on a rotating piece? You have to have some slip rings. So that's, again, mechanical contact you would like to avoid. So he came up with another revolutionary idea, which at first many thought that this is perpetual mobile, that it's impossible to be done. And that was the idea of not even having any uh, source of power being brought to the secondary side in, in means the rotor windings, but basically use any piece, metal piece, which any material which conducts the current and generates basically the short returns on the secondary. So this will look like a two-phase transformer with the primary windings, and this will be a secondary windings of that two-phase transformer. And through the transformer action, the current is induced in a secondary winding and because it is shorted voltage is induced and because it's short return the current tremendous current is introduced and a rotating field in a stator creates a, also the corresponding rotating field in a rotor and in fact uh, you obtain a synchronous uh, you obtain a induction motor which is featured by the fact that it cannot operate at a synchronous speed which we just mentioned is 3600 rpm for 60 hertz operation but it operates slightly below behind it it's with a so-called slip frequency, or slip, uh, typically a slip maybe 1% or so, so to say for 3,600 RPM, maybe your actual physical rotational speed of the rotor is uh, on your 3,500, 3,550 RPMs or so. So by making this induction motor, he was able to create the ideal device which completely eliminated all the mechanical connections. There is no uh, mechanical ne connections needed to bring the power to the secondary to the rotor because that was obtained by transformer action induced from the primary winding and uh, into the secondary. So this is the now very rugged device. And in fact, that's the reason why most of the power in the world at present time is uh, generated by the synchronous generators, which I just demonstrated before. And most of the power is being consumed by the induction motors. 
because it's a very rugged in, uh, device, something which can be easily uh, operated. So let me demonstrate that principle here. So why don't we have some lights now and uh, show you 